Yellowstone Volcano. Why the USGS predicts a month-long eruption in July will bury the US in ash. A USGS scientist demonstrated in a lecture a surprising simulation of the Yellowstone volcano showing a month-long eruption in July that would bury the northern US state in a meter-high ash. Yellowstone volcano is one of several dozen volcanoes on Earth that have been labeled supervolcanoes for their ability to emit more than 250 cubic miles of ash and debris. Plumes from the eruption could rise 17 to 30 miles into the atmosphere, above the jet's altitude and could cause devastation on a global level. This type of event has occurred three times in history, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 630,000 years ago. Larry Mastin, a USGS hydrologist, collaborated with colleague Jacob Lowenstern in 2016 to produce a paper on the impact of falling ash if another supereruption occurred. Speaking in a public lecture that same year, he explained, the goal was to see how the growth of the umbrella cloud would affect the distribution of ash from Yellowstone. We performed several dozen simulations starting with magma eruption volumes of several hundred cubic kilometers. So here it is, if you take into account the volume of tephra that expands when it erupts, the volume of the tephra layers formed will be several times greater than the volume of magma alone. So this would correspond to a tephra volume of over 1000 cubic kilometers. We used durations ranging from 3 days to 1 month and umbrella cloud heights ranging from about 15 to 35 kilometers, 9 to 18 miles. Wind fields are chosen randomly based on historical patterns, but it turns out they don't actually matter that much. Mr. Mastin then showed how the Yellowstone supereruption would bury much of North America in ash, with some areas more severely affected. He details how the duration of the eruption, or the time of year does not seem to change its consequences much. He added, so in this simulation you can see that over a three-day period, this umbrella cloud covers most of the North American continent. It then gradually spreads out following wind patterns, so you can see the tephra deposits in these four different three-day simulations. Once in January, once in April, once in July and once in October. The pale yellow color is 1 to 3 millimeters, 3 to 10, 10 to 30, 30 to 100, 100 to 300 and the dark region is more than 1 meter of ash. If you observe for a duration of one week, the pattern looks quite similar and for a duration of one month the pattern is also quite the same. But as time goes by, we lower the average eruption rate, which weakens the growth of umbrella clouds. This comes after it was previously revealed how parts of Yellowstone National Park were closed after recording uplift in the caldera. In 2003, changes in the Norris Geyser Basin resulted in the temporary closure of several passes in the basin. New fumaroles were observed, and some geysers showed increased activity and increased water temperatures. Mr. Lowenstern, who was tasked with monitoring USGS activities, revealed during a lecture in Menlo Park, California, why the park was closed. He said in 2014, around that time there was a lot of hydrothermal activity in the Norris Geyser Basin area and new linear vents forming at Nymph Lake. 